Let's bring in Texas Congressman Dan Crenshaw to expand on this conversation. Congressman, good to see you. In the immediate wake of the assassination attempt, you took a methodical approach with the information we had at the time. So after what's transpired over the last 10 days or so, the non-transparent actions of the federal government from DHS to Secret Service, what is your evaluation of events that transpired that day today? Uh, it hasn't changed much from my initial reaction, which is there's there's a huge planning failure. So you've got a building that's about 150 meters from the president. Uh, it's not really a building. It's actually a complex of buildings. And there's a decision made to put around, what, from my understanding from talking to law enforcement and Secret Service agents, around four police officers in that building complex. That's not enough. That's not enough to secure what, would, what is, should be considered a, a, a very threatening location. Huge failure, and, and that's a leadership failure. And I think you know, the problem with the director, and she should have resigned, glad she resigned, um, is that she didn't really tackle that problem or, or, or explain their actions very well. And she talked about not putting snipers on a, on a sloped roof, which is, of course, nonsense. I mean, they, they had snipers on another sloped roof. Uh, now, look, if, if, if the roof has a very, very steep slope, I understand that, but that was not the case with these roofs. So that, that really removed a lot of her tactical credibility and her ability to just move this agency into a place that it needs to be so that we can trust that it's protecting our president and presidential candidates. Well, Cheadle, in my mind, Congressman, seems to be a symptom of a, of a much larger problem. She seems to be one of many type government officials serving today. Tell me why you think that a number, a growing number of government employees seem to be so emboldened to be, well, frankly, in your face, unqualified and unaccountable. Is it because government workers know that they can break the law, refuse to comply with congressional subpoenas, or, or fail to protect the leading candidate for president, and they'll still be allowed to keep their taxpayer-funded jobs? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 maybe it's all of those things, right? Um, it, the, the fact is, is that as a, as, a, as, a, as a sense of duty, as a sense of honor, her immediate reaction should have been, I need to resign. That's what her immediate reaction should have been, and her legacy beyond that would have, would have been intact. Instead, she fought it, did a terrible job trying to explain away those actions, did not, said she took full responsibility, but that's really not the impression we got based on that hearing. I think everybody would agree with that. And then, and then again, made these, these, these tactical comments about sloped roofs and sniper operations that look as a, as a guy who knows who knows tactics pretty well, are just nonsense. And it makes me question her 27 years as a Secret Service agent. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all of those things, Chris. The accountability has to be there. Um, uh, I'm glad she resigned, but, but frankly, she should have been fired. Uh, just like Alejandro Mayorkas should be fired for not being able to secure the border. There's a number of, number of government officials that should be fired for not doing their job. Right. Just, just because she goes away doesn't mean the questions about government competency goes away. Uh, another one of these individuals not, not fit for their job, Attorney General Merrick Garland. He escaped accountability a few weeks ago. Congresswoman Anna Paulina uh, Luna, your colleague, signaled she was going to bring a contempt vote back to the floor. And uh, she wants to do this to basically make sure that nobody is above the law. As you know, Steve Bannon, Peter Navarro, they were sent to prison for defying lawful congressional subpoenas that were issued to them from Congress. And a lot of people believe that just because you're the Attorney General of the United States, you, if you do the very same thing, which Merrick Garland has done, he is guilty of doing, you should not escape that same fate. So if the DOJ won't do it, it falls on our elected representatives in Congress to do it. Where are you on this? Uh, well, I mean, I did the press conference with Anna on this. I'm a co-sponsor of that of that piece of legislation on that on that uh, privileged motion. So, um, I'm, I'm I'm very much in favor of it. Uh, it was bad timing when she brought it to the floor. There was way too many members absent at the time. Uh, I'm not sure why they chose that week to bring it to the floor. So she, we we do need to bring it back. I think it can pass. And uh, we need to hold him accountable. Uh, he's, again, he's, re he's refusing to turn over documents uh, and his, and his mealy-mouthed legal answers to why they're refusing to do that. Um, it, it, it just it doesn't pass the sniff test. And we do have this unique power as Congress to use our sergeant-at-arms to enforce that, that contempt vote. And I think that's what we should do.